So I'd like to speak about why I still love and teach Kundalini Yoga, even though Yogi Bhajan has fallen from grace. The first thing is that all gurus must fall. Whether they truly fall or whether they need to fall in the eyes of those who are following them, it's not really important. One of the things that drew me to Kundalini Yoga was that he centered the training around the mantra Sat Nam. Sat means truth, like Satya, Satyagraha. Nam means my name or that I bow. There's many meanings to it. And Sat Nam means that your path is following your truth. Sat Nam, the truth within me, is who I am. Not the truth the Guru says, the truth within me. This was the teaching. At the beginning of every class, we would chant Ong Namo Guru Dev Namo. Guru Dev Namo, Guru, the teacher within. Guru Dev, the teacher within. Namo, I bow to the teacher within. This was the teaching. A Guru is someone who can help lead us from the darkness to the light, but we must chart our course from there. I remember when I first started studying Kundalini Yoga within the community, there was something really off for me. So I really, him falling really didn't affect me because I found the community strange to begin with. I met amazing people. I'm not talking about the individuals. I met really great lifelong friends there. But there was something that really actually turned me off. When I was doing my training, I was so called to the technology of Kundalini Yoga. I knew in my deepest heart that this was a calling and I had to teach it. But when I would go away for the trainings every month, if you ask my family and friends, when I would get home, I would rant for the entire month about how furious I was about how they were kind of trying to brainwash you and it was this weird thing and they were trying to tell you what to do and how to live and what was going on and I literally was this crazy person (laughs) and then I would go back but I felt so called to the yoga I felt so called to the teachings of the actual yoga not the the strain there was something else strange that was going on that I couldn't quite put my finger on but the technology of kundalini yoga was so incredibly healing and so accessible for everyone and at that time I lived in a very small town of 8,500 people. So I wasn't going to bring in all the religion and the, the how to live and what not to do and, you know, and here's, you know, and I'm your guru, I'm your teacher stuff because it wouldn't have been digestible anyway and I would never teach like that anyway. So all that guru worship really never stuck with me anyway, but I was so called to the yoga. It was so It's such a powerful yoga. And the reality is, is if there's any point in time when we start to idolize a guru, right? Idol. You can't worship idols. You have to honor God, the universe, the truth within. That is always the role of a teacher. Never to look at the teacher and say, I'll just do whatever you say. People just did what Yogi Bhajan said. You know, it was like, here's the job I'll take. Here's who I'll marry. Here's what my name will be. Here's what I'm going to do every day. Here's, And it's like, it's okay once in a while to say to a teacher, what's your guidance? And then you take it to your own place of contemplation and you ponder it. And does it feel right for you? This is the true path. So if we find ourselves worshiping another human, that human must fall. There's no other option or else we'll never listen within. We'll never actually take our own spiritual journey and find the courage within to take the next step. There are those that say that the age of Aquarius, this time that we're coming into, whatever we want to call it, is also the time of God. Again, whatever word or meaning that makes sense to you, that it isn't a time of gurus or external teachers or authorities telling us how we're supposed to be living, what we're supposed to look like, how we're supposed to worship, 
how we're supposed to live, that it really is a time of integrating that deep inner truth, that divine self, into our physical lives. So it is intriguing to me that this incredible yoga has been demonized at this time. It's almost like it's a question, or it it poses a question for each of us to say, so do you feel called to do it yourself? Or is it just something you would do or not do based on the opinions of the crowd? I find that a lot these days, that we're asked to really listen within and say, what do I believe? What do I feel called to do? And then chart our course that way. Let our life unfold based on that. And for me, Kundalini Yoga is a big part of that. It's interesting because I taught it for a long, long time. And then my life changed and I traveled a lot and I I did other things. And for whatever reason, in this interesting time in our history, Kundalini Yoga is back at the forefront for me. It's a huge calling in my personal practice and in teaching. I find that intriguing. I don't understand it, but I find it interesting. So if you feel called to Kundalini Yoga, there's beautiful resources out there. Mine, other people, there's a lot out there. If you feel called to it, I'd give it a go. It's incredibly healing, incredibly centering. It certainly sets my day in the right, on the right foot anyway. I hope you have a wonderful day.